How do you watch your movies? Do you stream them? Do you DVD them? What do you do? I mean, there's a lot of options out there. We've been contacted by one of the streaming services, and we are curious as to how good it is, because neither Ed or I have ever used it. So sit back and relax. Check out episode number 96 of the Red River Horror Podcast to hear what we're talking about. Welcome back to the Red River Horror Podcast. This is episode number 96. I'm your host, Joe Zakreski, joined by RedRiverHorror.com founder, Eddie Kayazo. Hey, Ed, how are you? Joe, doing fantastic. Great to be with you I this know. evening. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little, getting a little hot out there, but hey, that's life. <laughs> it is. And actually, just real quick on a sad note, mm-hmm. um, Tina Turner left us on the day we're recording this. That's the right. great Tina Turner. Yeah. 83, right? Uh, yeah. Hell of a run. Absolutely. And I just, I can actually <laughs> spin this into the horror space in some way. Yeah. Uh, the saxophone player, I don't know if you've known this, Tim Capello. Mm-hmm. He was in The Lost Boys. Now, he's that guy, that jacked guy that's just winging, and he's just like, oh, there's no way that guy's a real saxophone player he's a he's he's just an actor a jacked actor that's and he was and he was and he was a saxophone player for the tina Lo- turner yeah. the late tina turner and he appeared in the lost boys and he appeared in the lost boys How so about I, that? I just wanted to kind of bring that I, it was it's sad story tina turner simply the best <laughs> i'm gonna miss you at I'm, my you know little eddie's dancing around to tina turner records and wow yeah it's, uh yeah it's always it's sad when someone Someone goes who's left an impact. Yeah. Yeah. So sorry to start on a sad note. I just wanted to get that in there because I always thought it was funny, especially yeah. when Melissa watched The Lost Boys for the first time. She's obviously a musician. Mm-hmm. We're watching just like, that's, that, that's an actor. It's just like, no. And then we looked up this guy, Tim Capello, and he was and we'll have to do saxophone We'll have player. to do this outside of the podcast. We'll have to just talk which, which movie saxophone solo is better, that or St. Elmo's Fire. <laughs> oh, Rob, right. Rob Lowe rips into it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the glory days of saxophone. Yeah. Time in the 80s. Hey, uh, speaking of which, where do you think we could watch those? I mean, you got to just decide where you subscribe. There's like way too many options right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, HBO Max has verged into just Max. Yes. Whatever Warner Brothers is deciding <laughs> to do. Um, actually, I'll tell you this much the new format, much cleaner, better look. Oh, good. Um, I'm a huge, like, I think between Max and Peacock with Hulu there, I mean, it's it's a challenge. But the thing is, if you start sup- subscribing to all these, I mean, that bill really starts to add up. Oh, yeah. So, we've been contacted by a free streaming app. Yes, we that have. That neither one of us is too familiar with, so we are going to check it out live during this episode, episode oh. number 96, <laughs> and that is Tubi. Yay, T-U-B-I. Yeah, now I'm familiar. I've seen it on like my Roku. Yep. It came with that Fire Stick. It comes with that. It's compatible, you know, on smart TVs like Sony. Uh, you can get it. Works on Android, iOS, Apple TV, Xbox, PlayStation, Vizio, even on your Xfinity box. Wow. So that means even if you have paid cable, you can use this app. <laughs> That's awesome. So it's it's just free across the board. It's one of those free channels. Yeah. So let's see what when so, the frequently asked questions on their website. It says, mm-hmm. what is Tubi? Yeah. Tubi is the leading free premium on-demand video streaming app. We have the largest library of content with over 50,000 movies and television shows, the best streaming technology, and a personalization engine to recommend the best content for you. Available on all of your devices, we give you the best way to discover new New content completely free. And then they ask, is Tubi really free? Yes, Tubi <laughs> is a free and legal video streaming application. To keep our service free and legal, we include ads which monetize the content that our partners such as MGM, Lionsgate, and Paramount provide to us. Hey, that sounds like a fair trade. I think so. You know what other platform used to do that before doing monthly subscriptions? Who? Hulu. Oh, yeah, they did. They did. Mm-hmm. So very interesting. Um, have, you, you've ne- have you ever clicked on it? I have. So I 
saw it on the, they said, you know, the Amazon Fire Stick. Uh, it's actually, I already watched a horror movie, if you can believe that. I already watched one on Tubi last year uh, in October, and that was Riding the Bullet, the Stephen King film. You got David Arquette in that. Um, Dude. It's, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> so I, I, I love that. It's And the funny thing is, I never knew this, that is set in October. So that's technically like a Halloween movie. I think it came up on one of our live streams. I tried to add it, and then the people watching said, no, nope, take that off, then... I think we put Hayride in its place. Yeah. But anyway, that so I did watch Tubi one time for a horror film. The other time I watched it, I believe that Tubi is owned by Fox. I think it's owned by Fox. Fox had the World Cup. So you could watch the replays of the games on Tubi. Okay. Uh, the, the World Cup games. So I caught some of the World Cup. Uh, on Tubi as well. We'll have to year. ask them because Hulu is also a Fox property. So yeah, maybe they moved that style of Hulu to this. But now that I think well, about not, it, it's a Fox is owned by Disney. Disney. Yeah, so probably not. Probably hmm. totally independent. Hey, too, if you listen to this, please let us know. Otherwise, we'll just look into it afterwards. <laughs> well, Again, this is live and happening. So <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's, it's funny. Us. And it's not. And the thing is, in the press release I got, uh, it doesn't say who they're owned by. It just, oh yeah, no, no, okay, here we go. I'll just read this uh, at the bottom of the latest press release I got. Mm-hmm. To be a leader in free ad supported TV streaming engages diverse audiences through a personalized experience, highly curated library of 50,000 titles, more than 200 FAST channels, and a growing collection of Tubi originals with no hidden paywalls or subscription tiers. Tubi, Tubi.tv, is part of Tubi Media Group, a division of Fox Corporation. That leverages synergies between Tubi, AdRise, Blockchain, Creative Labs, Credible, and other platform services across Fox. So I was right. They, they were. Hey, hey. that's, that's some not, not bad recall on my part for a, a weeknight here. No, that's a great job. And usually when you hear about these types of like streamers where it's like free, I'll, there's two others that I can think of that I've tried that mm-hmm. made me not want to try this, mostly because their libraries are too thin. Or yep. too dated, or you know, they just don't have what I'm looking for. Yep. And others where the ads are too invasive. Now I've heard I've heard Tubi kind of front loads it. Okay. I've heard that. I don't know how true that is. Again, something we'll have to check out. But like going um this this is gonna be a great time to get on board with these free streamers and maybe cut the cut the bill some of the others. Because if you pay attention to that industry, it's like, oh, you might want to watch a movie that's on, you know. Netflix, but now it's on Hulu because they're all starting to trade and share, you know, products that like we'll call them, you know, uh, uh, properties, properties that yeah. they own, and, and you know, give them other places to kind of spread it out. So you can see here, like Malignant is on Tubi. Whoa, Malignant's on there. Yeah, that just, was a Max. That was an HBO Max, right? Which was now removed from Max. Now you, you could mm-hmm. watch if you didn't ever had HBO Max. Now you can watch something that was made. Uh, was for theater, but they launched it on Max because of the the circumstances at the time. Might have done some theater, but it's like I click on this first thing is the Blade trilogy. Hey, like, dated, but I love it. And then you you got the Hunger Games, which I've never watched, but I I don't know how that would fit fit into horror. <laughs> but no, you got the Predator. You've got got the two thousand Godzilla. It looks like Predators. We we could keep scrolling through this. Whoa, there's, there's some money in here, Joe. Let me tell you. So I am surfing it for the first time on the internet here. So I have a screen in front of me. You're on your phone. Yeah. I'm on my laptop. I will tell you the laptop experience is quite wonderful. And just the catalyst to all this is Tubi has Red River Horror for some reason has crossed Tubi's desk. So they just started reaching out. Um, they just started reaching out with press releases, actual communication. Um, uh, who is this? Megan? Megan from Tubi, Megan, Andrea, Morgan. Mm. It's uh, so. The, Are we pandering? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> Not I just, really. I don't know how they found Red River Horror, but it's a wonderful thing. And now it it, it was it kind of it was the the start of all this. You're like, you know what? We should take if they're taking the time to talk to us, then maybe we should take the time to look at them. And I just want to tell you, I'm on the computer side of it, Joe. You ready for this top line when you click horror? What do we got? Hannibal. Terrifier, Evil Dead 2013, Whoa. Frozen, and Dead Silence, just across the top line alone. 
of what I'm looking at on Tubi to stream. Now that's free. that's the Frozen where they're stuck on a ski lift, not the. <laughs> yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, not the Disney the, the Let It Go. That's awesome. I'll have to see if this integrated because I was just introduced to another app called Just Watch. Okay. Where it's you load it, you know, you put in the titles that you're looking for and Just Watch will let you know which one they're on. And you can even set an alert for mm. like, oh, I want, um, Mer- like, say, American Horror Stories on Hulu. Yep. And maybe it's going to switch over. At some like maybe it goes to Netflix or something like that. You would put in a you could put in an alert, and if it makes that move, then you would be the first. To, you would find out about it as soon as it happens. Okay. So little things like that, and that's the Just Watch app. Now I wonder if Tubi is included on that because if it is, then look out because I might be canceling some stuff and switching to this. Joe, here's you ready for the second line? Mm-hmm. The Babadook. The Predator, which to your point, that was a Hulu movie, The Predator. Hulu was the one that, uh, when that film came out, I don't know if it was during the pandemic that it came out, or, I wouldn't, or it went to theaters and then went to Hulu, but... No, it was, it was straight, to, straight to Hulu. Straight to Hulu, so that's The Predator. The original, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Silent Hill, and Brightburn. Wow. This is solid. And then that Tubi TV, it, Tubi is on the Just Watch app, so you could combine... Oh, your existing ones, the one you want to keep, the ones you want to get rid of because it's adding up. It's it gets expensive to be with, you know, keep track of all these things. And you, you see all the changes going on in that industry, such as like uh, Shutter having yep. to really cut back. And, and yeah. you know, uh, it, it stinks. I know I, I Shutter was such a great. And the thing is, I think that AMC was riding so high on their series i mean think about it mad men into breaking bad into the walking dead which is a cultural phenomenon whether you like it or not it Mm is um so when they came out with shutter i'm thinking this is perfect like actually curated by people who watch horror movies real critics real just a real taste for horror and uh, i was really sad to see that a few months back that shutter started letting people go and i think that you know amc kind of hit its peak uh, and now that I don't, I don't know what properties of The Walking Dead are left, but AMC a spin right. off of another spin off. The original series is about to start with Negan and Maggie going to New York City. Uh Oh, but it's not. But not as so like The Walking Dead is the baseline. That's the that's the ground floor. The pretty much. The, the, and their their first spin off fear The Walking Dead is coming to an end, which was a real shame because like that one, I think their first season really struggled. Mm hmm. Because it was different, because it was like The Walking Dead starts, you know, after he wakes, like every, the sure. all the events have unfolded, whereas that starts from, you know, patient zero, kind of like, okay, nobody really knows what's going on. Yeah. Um, it's a real shame because by its late second season, third season, it was really doing, it, it's do, better than the original Walking Dead wow. by that point. And then I don't know who makes the decisions over there at AMC, who does the writing, who's just like, nah, we're going to take a character. We're going to kill off the main characters. Oh. Some of them, not all of them. <laughs> we're going to get rid of them, and then we're going to bring over this character from the regular series, and now it's going to be his show. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. If you're a fan. So I, but, but I have to think that AMC really enjoyed a great run with original programming there. And they rode that, if you think about it, into the pandemic. They created properties like Shudder. And now, you know, now the pullback, unfortunately. Now it's, it's just like, think about it, the company Zoom, right? Yeah, yeah. Gangbusters during the pandemic. And now people are kind of back out and about and everything. And also got stronger competition. With like Microsoft, That's true. Microsoft ramping up teams to, you know, yeah, take, but but take you, away a lot of that. Another great point, though. I didn't even think about this. Like Shutter was the first time. I mean, you remember that targeted advertising? It's like, whoa, this is made for me. There's a lot of competition now. Like, what's free here? Tubi. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And Tubi also has Tubi Originals. So. They do. They uh, do. Which... Mer- Mercy Falls looks like a new release, 2023. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sleeping Beauties, 2023. So these are brand new on the Tubi page. Shark bait. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we might get into sharks as the summer goes along, John. Yeah, I, I, I have some, some news on sharks that I might be able to share by next episode. Yeah. Sorry. I'm just, we're just getting a little excited. Here's a documentary, Scariest Monsters in America. Ooh. Interesting. Very nice. Yeah. There you go, the 1998 Godzilla. 
<laughs> yeah, this it's this is loaded with content. Mm-hmm. Don't breathe yeah, is on here, and all you have to do is watch a little, watch a little bit of an ad. I mean, it's you know, and that's important to note. Yeah, it's free because of the ads, folks. So just like Joe said with the original Hulu, it's free because of the ads. So when yeah. you start the film, you're gonna get you're, there, there's gonna be a commercial break, and all throughout the movie there are going to be commercial breaks, which reminds me, Joe, I can't believe this. I think I've watched two major movies on Tubi. Oh, what's the other one? The other one I watched last year was Jaws. I was still at my old house. There you go. I was still at my old house, and I, I'd i never seen it before, and I, and I searched the film Jaws, and the good thing is I, have a, I had a Samsung TV when we were at the old house. Yeah. Smart TV. And when you searched something, it would search all of the places for that film. I know other other uh, platforms have that feature but this one is just like oh watch free on tubi so i just oh yeah. hell yeah so i didn't actually go through tubi to find it i just clicked watch on tubi and yeah there you go and you know what else i just i it why it didn't hit me at first because i don't i guess i overpay for them with like <laughs> um so even if you pay for hulu you could still pay you know the lesser price it has ads right and the same with, I think, some of Peacock's free if you're an Xfinity customer with ads, or you can pay for it with ads. So you're going to get advertisements either way. If you're trying to cut costs, why not try something that's zero dollars, like as if you're watching regular TV? Joe, here's this one. Did you see I this? know a lot of people that, sorry to cut you no, off, but no. I know a lot of people who cut their streamers and just switch to like YouTube TV or just back to cable, just being like, whatever, I'll just wait, find another way to watch it. That's what my sister did. Yeah. That's how she watches Flyers games. I didn't even know you could watch streamed Flyers, Sixers, the Comcast properties pretty much. I didn't even know you could do that. And then uh, during the World Series at the, at the same time we had um, <laughs> the, uh, the the Halloween party. It's just like, well, how are we going to watch? How, how are we going to watch this at the same time? How are we going to put it on a big screen? Well, my sister had YouTube TV. And that's how she was. So that that was the Phillies, yeah. but that's how she watched Flyers games, and we were able to watch the Phillies that way too. Not Harvey related, but you know what? The best thing we ever did, I ever did with YouTube TV. What? So New Year's Day is a big thing in Philadelphia. Oh so yeah, that's the Mummers Parade. I like to go to it every year. We mm-hmm. got our regular spot where we set up. Problem was there was an Eagles game going on at <laughs> one o'clock. The same, you know, parades going on, Eagles games going on. Yep, quite the conundrum. In South Philly. In South Philly. So we're on Broad Street. And what we did, because we're just like, oh, if we bring, we could probably hook up one of our phones, if we have an HDMI with with the The (laughs) USB-C, we could hook up the YouTube TV Uh to a TV. And it's like, well, what do we do about a speaker and battery life? It all came together. Our good friend, John Hill, had a little, he had his wagon. And he wagged it from his house in South Philly to Broad Street with a TV. Another friend brought a power source so we wouldn't run out of power. Like, you could plug. It was powered by DeWalt, so you could plug the TV into it. Oh, man. Power the TV. Dude. The phone in there. And then another speaker, like a little sound bar. So we had the game on. <laughs> What the parade going on? We had people like stopping and watching <laughs> and cops working broad street, like leaning awesome. back. So like, what score? What we got? That is now. That's a hell of a story. That was that was pretty sweet. So, oh man, <laughs> maybe maybe we do it again. So somewhat for. I'll tell you what. That's that's an all timer right there. That was good. That's a good one. That was a good one. Um, but I wanted to tell you, so I'm still scrolling through here. Tubi, like I said, we're kind of paging through this for the first time. Lovecraft Country. Tubi. It's on Tubi right now? <laughs> right now, yeah. It, that yeah. was an HBO show. It was. <laughs> yeah, Unbelievable. So you're starting to see these properties start to move around. Like uh, It's one of the weirdest things is seeing like um, Netflix created content on Hulu. Mm-hmm. Like I saw what the interview was right. on there. I'm like, what? <laughs> so... There's just a lot that's going to be going on, and we'll. Uh, this is. We'll, I'm, see, we'll see how it goes. It's just, it's, uh, it's very interesting. This was a great idea, Joe. Man, Tales from the Hood is on here from our friend Darren Scott. Um, Stacy interviewed him for one of the shark pieces. He uh, he was called to direct. I think it was Deep Blue Sea two a few mm-hmm. years ago, um, but he I think direct and produced Tales from the Hood, uh, classic from '95. There, 
Finders Keepers, Malignant, there it is. You had already said that. The Craft from 96. There's a gem. I still say it's going to be my daughter's favorite movie soon, but we'll see. Which one? The Craft. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just hit this the first time on Tubi tab. And it's mm. like, you know what? I know, you know, a year ago, two years ago, it's just like, oh, you got to get, get Shutter, get Shutter, get Shutter. And it's like, I'm looking at this. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff here that's like, looks like indie horror. Like here's one, a Savannah haunting. Hey. Good box art. Got the screaming looking zombie girl thing. After losing their daughter to to drowning, a family moves to a new home where supernatural experiences and sinister forces haunt them. Sold. I'm a simple man with simple needs. Hey, yeah. talking about Sam Raimi, which we did three episodes on. <laughs> yeah, right. Drag Me to Hell is Drag on me here. Hell's on there. Yeah, along it's on the same line here as The Devil's Rejects, uh, another classic that. Uh, uh, Steve Morrison from Preston and Steve told us to watch uh, Train to Busan. That's on here. The original Fright Night. Uh, here's one, Joe. And this is one we got to get on sidebar. I'm going to take us off course for a quick second. Yeah. Jason X. Yes. We have to do. We So we have a script. We have a draft. A draft. Okay. So it's, it's, it's not the exact wording that was used in the movie, but we have a script of Jason X. And we've talked about doing that reading. <laughs> so. so so real quick, Joe, uh, I think we talked about this. Have we talked about this on the show before? I'm not sure. I know you and I did. Uh, whether off, on or offline, <laughs> if, we, if we paid Kane Hodder to sit there and do the Jason parts. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, so like we have the table read. He's on a screen. And obviously Jason has no yeah. lines. That would be. No. <laughs> no, but still. That would be cool. Yeah, I mean, to say I'm blown away by what's offered on here is expecting it to be more like going on to Sci-Fi Channel and just seeing a bunch of independently made stuff or like, you know, maybe they, you know cheaper, low budget. Sure. And here, I mean, big names. Hey, Rob Zombie's Halloween on there. Yep. I don't care. I still liked it. Our friend Jeffrey Reddick, his uh, movie Tamara. That's on Tamara. there? Tamara. Yeah, the girl with the axe. Yeah, scrolling. Devil's oh, Rejects, yeah. you get. Three from Hell, which I haven't seen yet. Now you can. Yeah, now I can. Now you can. ATM, that's an interesting one. I watched that when it first came out. That came out in 2012. Did you see ATM? I did not. Oh, that was, uh, okay, so this is going to start playing. I don't mean for it to do that. Late night stop at an ATM becomes a desperate fight for survival when three co-workers are trapped and terrorized by a mysterious hooded assailant. Not that bad, Joe. It wasn't a bad film. Okay. Yeah. That seems worth checking out. Mm-hmm. So I, hey, there's a movie on here about something that I covered back in 2021. A movie robert the doll oh my gosh which i covered wow. after i came back from key west florida the the honeymoon yeah because you because and that was good on you man you looked for you're just like okay what what can i take back for horror sake mm -hmm. while you were on your honeymoon and that we really there, appreciate there it. he was robert the doll okay robert the doll 2016 movie rated tvma so Based on, Could, there's not much description here. Based on true story, a family is on the edge after their son gets a vintage doll. Robert, possessed by a spirit with a history of terrifying mayhem. So I'm guessing it's not based in Key West, but based off the idea of it. Based off the story? Yeah. That works. It'll, uh, I'll do. I, that means I'm going to check it out. Yeah. <laughs> That'll do. That'll do. I've been trying, so after the screams, uh, after like going through, watching the screams before, um, our scream episode then i kind of took a uh a horror breather you know just out of life happens cause sure because i really wanted to watch the new version of all quiet on the western front oh wow um and now there's like not to change gears too much away from you Tubi, but you know just a uh, the the movie war movies i don't know you can't, I mean, you can't, you can't really call them like, they don't really fall in the horror genre at all. But, I mean, just the, 
the feeling that you get from them of just like sheer depression sometimes yeah is something that's like always like kind of blown me away um when done right war films yeah. i think invoke can, can ev- invoke the the most emotion out of yeah the movie anybody. the movies itself is not scary but the emotion that it delivers to you the viewer is a scary thought yeah <laughs> like i watched oh, the new the new ver- the remake I get or update of all quiet on the western front and just had to go for a walk <laughs> <laughs> so um and now on my radar i have it it's not available on any streamers but i was able to get a get a copy uh it's a world war ii story that was made from the soviet union released in 1985 called come and see so similar it's like their version of all like an anti-war movie like all quiet on the western front wow but it follows a young man from belarus and this movie is considered one of the most disturbing movies ever made oh, because boy. of the realism it uses of nazi you know how the nazis treated the villagers like i think they destroyed something like 30 to 50 villages completely Jeez. population and all just completely wiped them off the fucking map wow um so follows a young boy from one of those villages now have you ever seen all quiet i've read the book yeah. I've, I've never seen the visualization of it but both old or new yeah um i'm trying to think of the last war movie i saw maybe i, I guess american sniper if that counts i'm trying to th- i'm just trying to think in order so zero dark 30 the hurt locker yeah. Uh, American Sniper. Oh, I saw uh, Thirteen Hours too, but that wasn't that was Benghazi. That wasn't um, War. Yeah, man, I'm really trying to think. So we watched. You made me watch um, Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, that was tough. That was that was sad. Yeah, <laughs> that one gets a lot of flack due to historical inaccuracies, but it really doesn't take away from the movie. I mean, no, I mean it's, it's like great, relax. great actors, yeah. great writing. I mean, it it made me. Uh, yeah. tear up I the t- amount of money that went into it in the first place <laughs> um yeah no I'm, I'm telling you like i'm telling you so all quiet on the western front it's not scary in itself it's just scary to think about it's yeah like when you're done to think what these people went through sure it's just the heart is just horrific wow um yeah and i mean then, no i'll have to see love to see the visualization of it because i the last i read that book was sophomore year in college yeah so it's been a little while yeah. Um, oh. Yeah. Wow, Joe. Now I'm depressed. <laughs> no, totally <laughs> worth checking out. <laughs> that, and I know your sister watches it multiple times because like, she doesn't use social media very often, but for some reason makes it a point to post that she's watching Band of Brothers. Yeah, <laughs> she does. I And I found, <laughs> funny thing, I was kind of doing a, 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 I'm finally reining in all my physical media stuff, yeah. like DVD players, VCRs. Like I'm just trying to, See if I can put something together to where I could start selling or getting rid of or donating, whatever. Uh, some of this physical media stuff that I have. I'm going to keep my, my horror movies. Well, uh, The yeah. only thing physical media-wise that will be expanded are horror movies on DVD or Blu-ray and also the record collection. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it won't be – that won't be expanded like crazy, but – uh, but everything else, I'm, I'm starting to starting to offload, and I found one of my sister's old DVD players. It was an iHome. Remember that brand? Oh yeah. Inside was a disc of one of the discs of Band of Brothers. I'm like, this. She is obsessed with this thing. I mean, it it's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I loved it. Now I've was watched that, it multiple times. Was that the Tom Hanks produced one after Saving Private Ryan? Yeah, so that's the Hanks and Spielberg one, and each episode opens with them actually interviewing the uh, the veterans that were from 101st Airborne, and then it goes into the the show. The dr- dr- rock dramatization yeah. of it. Yeah, they, the Battle of the Bulge, uh, you know, parachuting in on D-Day, like, they talk about it, mm-hmm. and then you watch it. Wow. Yeah. Um, probably like david schwimmer's best performance ever he's he's incredible in it the funny thing is that i'm going to side note on david schwimmer here yeah he's i know that ross on friends that's what he's most famous for yeah he's surprisingly a really good actor you you, 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 would, you know he's he got there for a reason right true he, it's it, like i some of the stuff he's done stage wise is is very well respected yeah uh it it surprised me i didn't know until post friends just how much 
David Schwimmer was appreciated among his peers, if that makes any sense. It makes perfect sense. Uh, I mean, you know, they he he kind of gets a little love on Curb Your Enthusiasm. There's I forget oh, he's on that. <laughs> yeah, I forget what season it is, but Larry gets cast in uh, Al Bro- or Mel Brooks is bringing back the producers <laughs> on stage, and he casts Larry and Ben Stiller. Okay. And just the way, you know, the way it unfolds, Ben Stiller ends up dropping and they bring in David Schwimmer because he's so, you know. Yeah. So they give him a lot of love there. And this just prompted me to be like, all right, well, now we've got to Google if he's been in any horror movies. Oh, that's a good call. Yeah. Has David Schwimmer entered the world of horror? Yeah. So there's I just put in horror movies, but I know the first one. I don't think it's a horror movie <laughs> that popped up. I was like, I think I remember seeing trailers for The Paul Bearer. <laughs> we go way, way back. Oof. So let's see. They could be like small parts. Let's see. There, here's one just called Wolf. Okay. Does he got a? Is that his name? Is that? Oh man, this just must have like dated us. We might have been too young to like pick up on this. I... So this, he's definitely a side character in it. I mean, listen to. Hold on, listen to this cast, Ed. I'm just going to read you the synopsis here. All right. After being bitten by a wolf in rural Vermont, aging book editor Will Randall, played by Jack Nicholson, finds himself full of youthful vigor. Randall then discovers that he's been fired and replaced by Stuart Swinton, played by James Spader, a vicious young executive. As Randall struggles to regain his position, he becomes enthralled with Laura, was it Alden, Aiden, whatever, played by Michelle Pfeiffer, his former boss's daughter, and an increasingly animal-like urge begins to overwhelm him. Randall worries that he may be a werewolf. (laughs) What the? I missed that one. Uh, okay, Ed, I think we're going to have to do some we're going to have to do some episodes where we really dig in and try and find some random stuff to talk about. Yeah. Like Wolf here. <laughs> yeah, so, Jack Nicholson, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it looks like he's get he's he's had some some side. So, probably the closest he's had to a lead is this psychological thriller named Apt Pupil. Oh, wow. Yes. Which he is, was in that, yeah, and that's a that's a Stephen King, yeah. So it's like I don't think I've seen that one. Directed by Brian Singer, yeah. Have you seen that one? Oh, uh, a very long time. I saw it on VHS. Yes, and I, I, it's pretty evil. Um, yeah, so we'll have to check that one out now too. Let's just start doing that. Let's start watching like random movies. <laughs> and let me see if I can recall properly. That's Ian McKellen plays an old school Nazi. Uh, that's living here and he starts to train um, oh my gosh who plays the young, oh it's gonna kill him Brad Renfro yep yes <laughs> wow that is just off the top of my head um, yes yeah that that's a me- that's that's a messed up story yeah how about that okay Brad Renfro R.I.P. yeah that's a shame that's a shame. But there's there are a lot of gems, Joe. There's they're all hidden. Yeah. And there's some that we've like just we've just slept on. To get, we gotta get we gotta get in there. Apt pupil. Apt pupil, yeah, that might be a depressing one. So back to Tubi, where we started. Sleepaway Camp, the Amityville Horror from nineteen seventy nine. Yeah. Hell House 2, what? <laughs> Creep Show 2, which is surprisingly good. Yes, Don't hate is. on Creep Show 2. I like that one. It's fun. Yeah. Looks like Dead Rising. They had a, a CGI type movie out, that old Xbox game. Dead Rising Watchtower. Very interesting. Yeah, I think we are going to have to do a nice, a nice to be dig. And see, uh, see what we can what we can find that might be a diamond in the rough but there's a lot of gems to dig through there are and here's one joe repo the genetic opera we interviewed oh whoop hey sorry, sorry about that that was a uh, oh who did we interview darren no darren lynn boozman bowsman was the director oh man let me look through these names here real quick it was a connection through brooke lewis 
okay, Alexa Vega, Anthony Stewart Head, Sarah Brightman, Paris Hilton, <laughs> Ogre, Terrence Zdundich, Bill Mosley, Paul Sorvino, Sarah Power, Jessica Horn. Oh, we, we interviewed the gentleman who did the music, who did the soundtrack for Repo the Genetic Opera. We'll have to go back and give him proper credit, but that's on there. So now if we wanted to watch it, it's a musical. All right. Interesting. Interesante. Very cool. The Bye Bye Man. The Bye Bye Man. I think I'm the only person that liked it. <laughs> uh, it's worthy, I guess, you know. It's a, It was not... No, people not not worth defending. People didn't like it <laughs> did, at all, and and I get it. I, I thought he was cool. Yeah. I thought he was cool looking. I, I nobody else really agreed. Um, <laughs> Hell House LLC, yeah, the original. Dude, I mean that's probably pro- one of the best found footage ones out there. I saw it for the first time last year. I loved it. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, it's so good. So anyway, so Tubi, thanks for reaching out. That was, I, I enjoyed going down the rabbit hole. And Joe, I'm not even, I'm still like about halfway through this page. So I will be on the lookout for more communications from Tubi. I think uh, some of the people that act in the original film, some of the directors, they want to come uh, speak with us here at Red River Horror. So we awesome. might set up some of that in the near future. In the meantime, I'm going to take a nice dig through here and see what else we can find. Yeah, sounds great. And just before we go anywhere... I'm not crazy for trying to find, like, the horror in movies that aren't horror, right? You're not? I'm not. Am I crazy for doing that? Where I'm always just like, man. Uh, are, are you saying... I don't know. Uh, maybe I misheard you. Are you saying that you do look for the... I do. Okay. Is that crazy? Maybe. Maybe not. Could be. Could be unnecessary. But I do a lot of things that are unnecessary. <laughs> I drink my own urine. <laughs> um, I, no, I, I the only place that I do that mm-hmm. for me is I try and think of how I see this online space that's been created by like Screen Rant, by Watch Mojo, by I'm trying to think of these online properties that just exist online, whether articles, what culture is another one. Sure. And how they're able to find content, things to talk about. So what I've started to try to do is look for the horror in, okay, so like I really liked the series House of Cards. So it's like, okay, could I put together an article of, you know, Frank Underwood's top five scariest moments or like, or like that, you know, throughout the whole series of house of cards, what are the top five scariest things that happen? I mean, he pushes someone onto a train track that gets killed. He shoves someone down the stairs. He lets someone die in a garage with the, the pipe. I mean, there's, he's a bad dude. He's not, not good. So I try and think of that. I try and think of, uh, I'm not a huge fan of the Marvel movies. You are. So I even think when we were starting red river horror, uh, back in 2017, I was thinking like, Joe, are there any, are there any articles that you could write with the Marvel movies? Like, what are the scariest things that have happened, or the scariest sure. characters? That, so I, I don't think you're crazy looking yeah. for the heart because I, I see what's happening on the World Wide Web, and I'm thinking to myself, how can I apply that? Like, I can, I can do this. I can think of, you know, what are the scariest Batman villains? What are the, what are the scariest moments in the Marvel universe? Star Wars, right? Things like that. So, so I, I dig. I can. I think. I think I understand what yeah. you're where you're coming from no it's it's totally worth like finding and then if anybody's listening to this and wants to share it you know at red river horror let us know because that's just a fun topic that i like to talk about yeah <laughs> the horror in films that aren't horror yeah um, yeah we've done an episode like that a long time ago but whatever um in more exciting news i don't know if i said it on here something that's going to be big coming up in um the fall that was announced is Wednesday 13. You know, that artist who I love, yeah. um, who's liked maybe a couple of my tweets. Hey, I'll take that. Pretty awesome. But hopefully we can set something up where we can meet with them. He's going to do a 20th. It's crazy to think about that. This album's 20 years old. He's going to be touring on it, performing songs from the murder dolls. Wow. Like, considering, you know, Joey Jordison's dead. Their <laughs> first drummer, Ben Graves is also passed away. So, He's just doing it with his band, and they're going to tour and play those songs. So I'm very excited for it, which will also turn into a playlist that I'm going to curate. Ooh. So little things, 
little exciting thing about that that it's like if i had the chance to enter sorry i'm got like this is just the last thing i want to talk about real quick no just to interrupt you in, in a good way yeah. you're on youtube music so if you curated a playlist there yeah. we could i could uh, we could put an article up there on redriverhorror.com yes and share it and say here's the playlist you were talking exactly, about exactly because i was thinking about if i had the opportunity to interview him what would i want to talk about and that would be so he had a band called the frankenstein drag queens from planet 13 okay a lot of those songs that he wrote with that band became murder that make up almost the entire murder dolls first album just wow. with, some, with the lyrics changed mm-hmm. and so, like a lot of like small changes big changes and i was like you know if i ever had the opportunity to like interview him i would like want to learn about what went into changing all these songs like what like you know some of them you can kind of tell where it's just like that's not really studio friendly you got to make something that's a little like because it was with roadrunner records so okay. you're going from an indie label to roadrunner with you know their one of their main guys and joey jordison you remember that when he and Corey both started doing their own things before after slipknot's I, this is all right after iowa so it's like oh, so it was huge they're huge on the, yeah. the roadrunner brand okay um, so I would love to learn some more about that. And that's so I'm going to make a playlist of it'll be their first. It'll be the Murdoch's first album, but all the songs from Frankenstein Drag Queens that made it up. We'll put that together. Yeah. We'll get it up there on the RedRiverHorror.com site. I should also mention if you'd like to write for Red River Horror, we want to talk to you. Uh, some articles. We got Stephen Beeson doing the the uh, preview every month. Mm-hmm. That's great. Uh, Stacy is still reviewing some wide release movies for Red River Horror. There's upcoming soon very soon uh maybe not by the time this episode's out but the robert england documentary that's coming out she's going to yeah. be reviewing that for redriverhard.com um so joe yeah get that together get get a link for it and uh we'll, we'll put it up there that'll be a lot of fun for sure i want to do i want to do more stuff with music because it, talking about scream and scream three the soundtrack not to relitigate all that but you know how much we loved that and it got me thinking it's just like okay well will i go back to that freddie and jason soundtrack will i go back i, I want to go back now and hear here if i can find some uh some rare gems because we, it's funny we were talking about creed mm-hmm. not to talk so fast here but we were talking about creed lab on the last episode they did a killer cover of i'm 18 by alice cooper okay and it's on the faculty soundtrack all right so it's and it's not a hit it's not a like no it's that just was, just on like they were brand new when yeah. that movie came out so exactly so i was like it just had me thinking i'm like yeah you know what creed so i, I looked it up yeah I'm, I'm 18 by alice cooper yeah. uh covered by uh creed and it's and it sounds good it's they do it they do it right nice yeah nice so get that playlist together wednesday 13 and one more thing before we go i don't think we're gonna make it joe because this is crazy monster mania con our mm-hmm. friends, they're celebrating, I believe, their 20th anniversary this year. Mm-hmm. They're having three conventions this year. We're going to try and make one of them as Red River Horror. The one we will not make is the one in August, August 7 to 9. But you can still get tickets. It's saying limited quantity available. I just wanted to share this with Red River Horror listeners. There is going to be a Lost Boys reunion. Oh, this one. So you are not going to want to miss that. The ones in Cherry Hill, just to uh, why this thing sold out. Yeah. You know who's at the very top? Kiefer. Kiefer Sutherland, baby. He's. I, I, would you ever think of him as someone to do a convention? No. That's pretty big. So, no, but he's drank himself into it, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still, great actor. Yeah. Um, I guess maybe the, the Monster Mania Con's really bringing out the big guns for their 20th anniversary. They're kicking it off in August. So you have Kiefer Sutherland, Lou Diamond Phillips, Dermot Mulroney, um, who was in Scream as well. Oh, yeah, he yeah, was. Yeah. Look at that. Uh, Jason Patrick, uh, is Michael and the Lost Boys, Alex Winter. So you have a whole – if you're a Lost Boys fan, that's just surprising that we're talking about uh, – <laughs> the Lost Boys twice in this episode, but here's one for you, Joe. You know who's going to be there? Who's that? Corey Taylor. That's right. How I about forgot he's going to be doing that. He just doesn't stop, dude. I mean, he goes from he'll do like the Slipknot stuff, and then he'll do. He stopped on the Stone Sour. He's just been doing solo stuff, which we'll just not not address. Okay, that release. Um, I like Slipknot and Stone Sour, so yeah. I can, if you're saying it's stay away from it, then I will. I'll give him credit for doing something different. Mm-hmm. 
And I'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay. Um, so there's... Aly- Alyssa Sutherland's going to be there too, by the way, if you're Evil Dead Rise fans. The, uh, the mom. She was yeah. fantastic in that You film. know what? So I didn't, I don't even know if I talked about that. Her, Alyssa Southern, like her tweeting about it mm-hmm. has made me just appreciate the movie more with how she's just been tweeting and just loving the attention. Really? That's good. Ed, it's wholesome and you got to be so happy for her. Yeah. And just happy for the success of the film. I, I mean, she was... She her was and Lee really- Cronin. I mean, they're both just like head over heels and how could you, like, how, how can you just not be... Yeah. They're living the dream, and good for them. So if you want to go, Monster Mania Con, there are still a few tickets left. I think we're going to catch the third one, uh, the third convention. We are definitely not going to be able to get into (laughs) the August one, but if you are an attendee, if you want to go and meet the whole Lost Boys cast, Alyssa Sutherland, um, it's a pretty big deal. Yeah. So, all right, Joe, I think that's all I got. Yeah, you know what, and for that's uh, episode number 96, I think I'm all out of things, but remember to hit us up at Red River Horror, at RedRiverHorrorDart.com, all those good things on all the social medias. Subscribe. Subscribe, Give support. Get in there. This has been episode number 96, and remember to keep traveling those channels of fear.